Hey everyone, it's Game Fruit Pulp, and welcome back to another Minecraft Building Toronto episode. In this episode, we're going to be taking a look at a few different buildings, both in the west end of our building area. These buildings are at very different stages in their lives within the built city of Toronto, as one of them is brand new and will be prominent on the city's skyline for years to come, whereas the others are nearing the end of their building life with new developments planned where they currently stand. If you enjoy this video and are new to the channel, be sure to hit that subscribe button. I'm pretty excited about this video because not only does it showcase two new blocks that are now finally completed, but it also showcases where the city of Toronto is heading from a planning perspective and what it will be leaving behind. While I usually think that progress, especially when it comes to more housing, is a good thing, when we look at what's happening in this neighborhood of Toronto, it may be cause for some concern. In this video, we're going to be looking at a brand new residential condo tower that will be a prominent feature in Toronto's skyline for years to come and a low-rise retail and office complex that is mostly empty now because of planned redevelopment, but in the past was full of great places to spend a Friday or a Saturday night. We're going to start off with the shiny new building, the high-rise condo tower at 19 Duncan Street, which is built by Von Frank. This modern tower is not yet completed, but was topped off at the beginning of October. For those who don't know, topping out or topping off is a builder's right traditionally held when the last beam or its equivalent is placed atop a structure during its construction. We made the decision to build this building in its completed form on our project because its completion is on the horizon. I got some great information about this condo from Urban Toronto, which is now one of our main sources for information with the closing of the Empress website. 19 Duncan is a redevelopment of a five-story heritage office building at Duncan and Adelaide Streets in Toronto's Entertainment District. It includes nine stories of office space, above ground floor restaurant and retail, with rental apartments through the 11th through 57th stories other than 40 hotel suites to be found on floors 52 through 55. Residential amenities will be located on the 57th and 58th stories. The condo tower is going to have a total of 58 stories with a height of 186 meters or 612 feet. The project was developed by West Bank Corp, Allied Properties, Wright and Wright, with the building architects on the project being Hariri Pontarini Architects and Eric Architects. The building also had a landscape architect of Janet Roseberg and Studio. The 19 Duncan project includes the redevelopment of the historic Southam Press Building, a five-story heritage office building constructed in the early 20th century. The red brick cladding with the stone, wood, and terracotta detailing will be restored and incorporated into the new design of 19 Duncan Street. Like many of these modern office towers that are built on top of older buildings in Toronto, I found that the most interesting part of this development was the history of the original building on the property. The original building is designated as a historic building under the Ontario Heritage Trust, and as we usually do, let's take a look at what made it a historic building in Toronto's history. The property at 19, 19 Duncan Street was constructed in 1908 as a printing factory for Southam Press Limited, which was part of the publishing conglomerate founded by William Southam in the late 19th century. The Southam Press building was commissioned with, when the printing enterprise was still known as the Mail Job Printing Company, with the plans prepared by the Toronto architectural firm of Sprout and Rolf. Southams occupied the site in the, until the 1960s, located in the King Spadina neighborhood. The property was listed on the City of Toronto Inventory of Heritage Properties, now known as the Heritage Register, in 2005. The property at 19 Duncan Street has design value as a fine example of an industrial building with features of the Edwardian classicism, the most popular style for any, all types of architecture in the early 20th century. The South End Press Building is particularly distinguished by its scale and corner location with principal elevations on both Duncan and Adelaide Streets, the distinctive fenestration, and the special features that include the terracotta finishes, the classically detailed surround on the west entrance, and the segmental arched pediment on the south elevation where painted signage reading Southam Press survives. The property with the Southam Press Building is associated historically with the development and evolution of the Kingswoodan neighborhood where it is situated. From its origins in the 19th century as an institutional and residential enclave, King's Medina became Toronto's manufacturing centre after the Great Fire of 1904, when the area was filled with new factories and warehouses including the Southam Press Building. The Southam Press Building is valued historically for its associations with the company founded by William Southam in 1871, which became one of the largest printing enterprises in Canada. In the late 19th century, Southam acquired the mail job printing company in Toronto as part of his business empire, and afterwards appointed his son Richard to oversee the enterprise. This subsidiary was renamed Southam Press Limited in conjunction with the completion of the Southam Press building at 19 Duncan Street, which occupied the company until the 1960s. The associated value of the property at 19 Duncan Street 
is also through its connection to the notable Toronto architecture partnership of Sprout and Rolf, which designed the printing factory. Identified as one of the most important architectural firms in Canada in the early 20th century, Sprout and Rolf are associated with many Toronto landmark projects in the city. Um, uh, among them, the firm's renowned collegiate Gothic designs at the University of Toronto. Sprout and Rolf's portfolio includes a Southern Press building and other commissions in the King Spadina neighborhood. Contextually, the property at 19 Duncan Street is valued for supporting the character of the King Spadina neighborhood as it developed in the early 20th century, when the area was transformed from a residential and industrial enclave to Toronto's manufacturing centre after the Great Fire of 1904. The industrial character of the neighbourhood is drawn from the large-scale factories and warehouses that line the streets, including those adjoining, adjoining the King Spadina Crossroads along, and along Adelaide Street West, where the Southam Press Building is found. The contextual value of the property on 19 Duncan Street is also through its historical, visual, and physical links to the setting in King Spadina, where it anchors a southeast corner of Duncan and Adelaide Streets. With the adjoining Canada Build Printing Inc. building at 15 Duncan Street and the White Swan Mills building at 158 Pearl Street, the Southam Press building is part of an enclave of industrial buildings at the east end of the King Spadina district. With the importance of this building and its history in Toronto, one could wonder why the property was developed in the first place. But now that it is done, I think they did a good job of integrating the new modern tower into the historic low-rise building at the corner. Rather than just plopping a building on top of this building, as we have seen with other developments, this new building does a modern, small modern step up that blends the heritage building into the modern tower. As always, Vaughn did a great job capturing this new building and was able to recreate the interior uh, that would be realistic to the finished product despite the actual building not being finished yet. Looking now into the shadow of this new tower, we find the second completed block that we're going to be looking at today, specifically at the east, uh, southeast corner, which was completed by our newest builder, Mike. Mike may be the newest builder, but he's completed a ton of stuff over the past few months, including a bunch of things in the west end of our map. Mike and started quick work finishing up this block and they both did a great job on it. The buildings on the south end of this block used to be full of nightclubs, music halls, and clubs, but a majority of those have now closed and the block is scheduled to be turned into more condos as this neighborhood goes through a dramatic shift. Mike did a great job of capturing not only the details of the building that everyone would see, but also some really great roof work details. That includes some plants to bring some extra air, uh, bring some extra life to the area. This area brings up an important discussion about the future of the city and more specifically, the future of Toronto's entertainment district. This building alone used to feature three destinations for nightlife that are now closed or soon to be closed. And while housing is incredibly important, it doesn't seem like these new towers being built in the area are replacing the nightlife venues that existed on the property prior to the new construction. If this trend continues, this neighborhood will have thousands of people living in it with nowhere for them to go and enjoy the night. And that doesn't even take into consideration that this neighborhood used to be an attraction for visitors and with every new development that takes out night places for nightlife, this attraction shrinks. I only bring this up because I think that it could be an interesting thing to discuss in the comments. What do you guys think? Is this neighborhood being tarnished by the mass construction of new condos and the speedy closure of many nightlife destinations that in some cases have been a popular spot for decades? Or do you think that this is just an inevitable shift in the neighborhood, similar to what we saw in this neighborhood before as we learned about the history of 19 Duncan Street, shifting from an area that used to be residential and uh, institutional to an area that was a manufacturing center, ultimately to the area like we see today as a center for nightlife? Let me know in the comments whether you think it's one or the other, or maybe you're somewhere in between. That's going to be pretty much everything for this video. With the completion of these blocks, we're down to only five remaining in our current building perimeter, and I'm hopeful that we may finish everything in this area by the end of the year and be ready to move south in 2024. If you're new to the channel and enjoyed the video, be sure to hit that subscribe button to catch future content on the channel. If you're a returning viewer and you enjoyed, be sure to hit that like button and share the channel with your friends so that we can continue to grow our community. If you're looking to catch up on past Building Toronto content, there's a playlist that has all the past videos on it, which is available on my channel. Thank you all for taking the time to watch the video. I hope that you enjoyed it. My name is Game Fruit Pulp, and this has been a Minecraft Building Toronto video. I'll catch you guys all next time. Have a good one.